today I have Sam from Set Sail Studios, and we're talking about fonts today. We're talking about font making, uh, font designing, how to how to use fonts, what's going to be what we think might be trending with fonts. And I know I've already used the word font a lot. I think sometimes we're, we're actually talking about typefaces. Maybe we can get into that a little bit later. But you know what I'm talking. We're going to talk about type today, typography. Maybe I should have just said that. <laughs> don't but start. Don't start the typeface font debate. That you'll, you'll, I, nobody's I ever going to win that one. <laughs> it's just a good. It's just a fun little. Yeah, I don't know. It's a fun little educational debate. How about first, if you want to just kind of briefly talk about who you are, what you do, and how you got into like making fonts and of course we're, we'll get into how you're making money with it i mean your fonts are phenomenal so yeah just just start with a little bit about yourself yeah well firstly let me just say thank you for uh inviting me on i know we've uh oh yeah been trying to arrange this for a while so it's great to um finally sit down and chat with you um but yeah my name's sam parrot i'm a font designer based in the uk um i run a type foundry called set sale studios uh where I've released over a hundred fonts or typefaces, whatever you want to call them, um, which is <laughs> <laughs> which is um, pretty crazy. But uh, so I tend to specialize more in in handcrafted um, typefaces. Uh, yeah, so I can give you a story of how I get into it if you like. Yeah, I, I yeah. think. It, wait, how many did you say? Over a hundred. Over a hundred. Over a hundred. Yeah. Good I mean, I don't. Thanks. <laughs> I, I struggled just to get one. I struggled to just. Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay. Yeah. So, okay. This will be really good. So yeah. Can you, can you talk about like how that inspiration came to you? I mean, I'm assuming you just kind of loved using type. You loved as all of us, many do watching, just love going through probably the largest part of the design process is like, what is the type that's going to work for this yeah. piece? <laughs> or, or did you find a gap where you were like, golly, I cannot find any handwritten fonts. Yeah. Tell us how you you got into it. Yeah, it was more the first one. <laughs> okay. <you> said. So, <laughs> um, but then it led on to me discovering the, the gaps in the market. So I was um, working as a freelance designer, self-taught designer for a number of years, primarily in the music industry, which was a really, really good place to get started in graphic design. Cause I could kind wow. of explore, yeah, explore loads of different styles. And I'd be working with like a heavy metal band one day and then it'd be like, you know, a soft folk singer the next day. So, oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun. Um, so what actually happened was I um, had um, a logo project for a, for a heavy metal band. And uh, so I designed this. I couldn't find the font I needed. So I designed it like this of really course. nice kind of aggressive lettering. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was, uh, it, it was a really long band name I remembered. So it took me ages and I, I was really happy with that. I thought they're going to love this. And of course, as it goes in graphic design, they weren't quite keen on the style, they, uh, they, you know, they liked it, but it wasn't the direction that they wanted to go in, okay. which is fair enough. But then I thought, you know, this is just going to be completely wasted now. So I wanted to try and do something with the lettering. So I thought, actually, I made this because there was no font. So maybe I could just try and turn it into my own font just for a fun little side project. Like you said, I, I love, I really enjoy typography. I just, you know, kind of became known for a bit of a logo designer. That was my most popular project that I was working on. So, right. Okay. Um, I literally just went on Google and typed in how to design a font and up came this very long winded tutorial for font lab. Um, font lab. Okay. Which, yeah, which was really helpful. Um, and it was just completely jumping in the deep end. I didn't really have a clue what I was doing. But I mean, I was already halfway there because I was vectorizing um, my lettering. So it was kind of a bit of a jump, but it was short enough that I could <laughs> make the leap, you know. So yeah. Um, yeah, so I designed this font, didn't really know what to do with it. I put it up for sale on my website, but it wasn't really known for a mm. go to you know, design product website, right. it was just a design agency. So mm, okay. um, it caught the eye of one of my friends who was also kind of in the design space. And uh, he said, Oh, dude, you're going to put this on creative market. Yep. Yep. So I had no idea what that was at the time. Um, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> so but I was really lucky because this was around 2014, 2015 where the creative marketplace had just um, opened up and it, there weren't too many designers on there and there weren't loads of products on there, but there were a lot of customers kind of waiting to, to purchase the latest products. So I was instantly kind of hooked with creative market and the way that they put the shop owner kind of front and center and you could have your own little 
yep. store on there and uh, played your graphics and stuff. I thought it was awesome. So I instantly applied. And uh, um, so my font that I put for sale on there was called Sycamore. And um, just the sales started rolling in, really. Like, so within wow. a few weeks, yeah, within yeah, a few weeks, wow. it, it had already made more money than the band logo was going to make as a one-off <laughs> oh, payment. Oh, man. So I instantly was like, okay, this <laughs> I'm onto something here. Yeah. And of course, the, and then it's ongoing revenue. It's, you know, even today, it, does, it doesn't sell much at all because it's quite an old font now, but I still sure. get sale for that font now, which is 10 years later, which is just incredible. Yeah. So, yeah, I was instantly hooked. I loved the whole process. I could work on my own ideas um, in my own time. It was just like a light bulb moment and... I haven't really looked back since then. I overlapped the font and the freelance work for maybe about a year. And then I just thought, I'd, all I want to do is make fonts. And that's amazing. It's really taking off. So, yeah, I, I scrapped all the freelance work and I've been doing full time font design since um, 2015. Wow. That is amazing. So, that, yeah. So, full time, you've been making fonts since 2015 to now. Yeah. Goodness sakes, that's amazing. Uh, many might know how we got started with Kittle is just through uh, heritage type selling yeah. uh, fonts, selling templates, and that's directly correlated to uh, Toby, our founder's success, also on creative market and design cuts and wherever else, selling fonts because there was a need, there was a gap um, yeah. of this style, and you kind of hit that as well. And even I, I mentioned earlier, I made one font relatively recently within the last maybe four to five months and it's already sold maybe 30 or 40 times and just just because i think it's really nuanced and there's not mine's like based on a typewriter so I, I, there are some pretty good like typewriter ones but they're all like kind of like courier where they're kind of yeah. like that really blocky serif whereas this one is like falling apart you know what i mean and so if yeah. you kind of found that similar niche with that that uh kind of maybe not Metallica style lettering, but that kind of old, really heavy metal, whichever one it was, you kind of felt. And clearly there was an audience that was like, oh, this is pretty sick. Like we could use this for something. Like if this band's not going to use it, we'll, we'll use it. You know, that kind of motif. I want to know your, your process, maybe just get a little bit into the process for anyone that wants to um, start making their own i think perhaps there's a lot of fear in having to be like a master hand letterer um to do this and i think to a degree that would obviously help i, I don't think that you would say that it won't help if you're not a letterer if you don't have some kind of basis on how letters are formed but i have friends that i don't know how they do it but they're just able to visualize like i don't know if they just memorize the grids or whatever but they can just open up font lab or glyphs or font self or whatever and they just draw it in the in the software yeah. which i think is truly amazing i mean just the way that they can in their mind kind of piece together here's how this is this high and this is we're going to duplicate this and turn it around and now i have the basis for my letters but maybe just give us your quick process yeah well i mean there's so many different ways you can design a font it kind of depends on the style of the font um mm. there's loads of different software you can use ranging from the really basic stuff to the really compl complex um software so it's like you were saying um you don't need to be a, a master calligrapher to make a font you know everyone has sure. their own handwriting style and i see some of my friends that have amazing handwriting and i think oh, i mm. wish that was my handwriting oh, so i could font. yeah <laughs> make a font out of that you know i might need to get some of them in to uh yeah do some scribbling for me but so i think the best way to, st to get started is to do a, like a handwritten font um because everyone has their own handwritten style and there might be you might find a gap in the market for that style and that's cool yeah yeah i mean people think of font design and it is very you know it can be intimidating but fonts can be really basic i mean some fonts that i've made in one one or two weeks have been my best selling fonts and they're just like really rushed scribbled rough fonts and there's a market for that kind of thing it doesn't have to be perfect um which mm. i think a lot of people okay. don't realize um so most of my fonts are handwritten and handmade so okay. i'll always start with pen on paper and I love experimenting with different pens and pencils and paintbrushes. And that's a really good way to kind of experiment different styles. Is just try different equipment because um, that can come up with some really good different options. You know, like one yeah. font I made was with a cola pen, which I didn't even know was a thing. But apparently I saw on uh, YouTube, you can make a pen out of a Coke can. You like 
cut out a little nib and then you dip it in ink and it just comes out with these crazy textures. I feel like that's how Ian filled like a like a oh, carrot a pepper. or a pepper yeah. with yeah, 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 something like that. That was exactly pretty yeah. wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just try it, just try anything and it, it's um it's surprising the results you can get. So yeah, once I've lettered every single letter on paper, which can be slightly painstaking sometimes, but um it's all good. Uh, I will scan it in one by one, which again can take very long. You're scanning um, the, it, the individual. So like, are, are you doing like one letter on one piece of paper or, or, or you're just trying to get like really close on one letter, but you did them all. Like I, when I started out, I was doing them one letter at a time, scanning it, putting it in, putting it in the software. But then I realized this is just a really inefficient way of doing it. So now, yeah, I've got an A3 scanner, A3 paper, and I will write the letter A as many times as I need to until I'm confident that there's one in there um, that I like. So uh, yeah, okay. that's that's the good thing about font design. It's like it's very forgiving. You know, you don't have to get it right the first time as long as I know there's something in there that matches what's in my head. Then uh, then we're good to go so um yeah also i can really get into a flow of the style that i'm writing if i just do the entire alphabet because you know oh certain, sure sure yeah, yeah I've, I've heard like a good basis is like at least three to four times like a a a a then go to b yeah if, especially if you're just starting out i mean you could get you you'd never get anywhere if you wrote a 26 times and then b 26 times i mean at your level maybe you're doing that but if you're just starting out it's just like you do it three or four times okay let's just go to the next letter you know and that way you yeah. at least have a couple to play with uh, i've definitely done some letters 26 times because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, um you know sometimes it, it, if it's a difficult style but um right i'll get there in the end yeah so then i'll scan every individual paper um and at that it point in. it's just like an image in in yeah. the computer right like it's just you just you just basically scanned it in. It's kind of like just having taken a picture. So anybody, I, I'm just wondering for people that like don't have a fancy scanner or maybe don't yeah. have a printer. Like I have a Canon printer, so I can easily scan. But like you could just take a picture on your phone if that's where you have to start, and yeah. you just have it as a, a JPEG or something on your computer. Yeah, sure. As long as it's like high quality, high course. credit. Yeah, yeah. It might take a bit longer. Um, I would definitely invest in a scanner. But um, you should, right. yeah, you could do it. On, actually, one of my fonts I did have to take pictures of because it was like a. I'm getting going down a whole different path now, but it was an SVG <sighs> font, and SVG right, fonts okay. can include color and stuff and color. Oh and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I wanted it was like a metallic paint, and I wanted to get that light reflection on it, which I couldn't oh, do on my. the scanner. So anyway, that's oh, a whole yeah. thing. It would just flatten kind of everything, right? It just didn't look like I wanted it to look. Um, yeah, I that's I six actually how I did my my first font was um, I took the the group of the groups of letters that I had typed out on the typewriter. I just got really close with my phone camera, yeah. um, and just got really close, and then did the next set and the next set and the next deck, and then slowly vectorized them. Right. Yeah. I was just going for speed. I wasn't even going for like. I was just like, the letters are done, man. The typewriter is going to be how it is. I'm not going to edit like how the typewriter is. You know what I mean? No. I wasn't drawing anything, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'll, um, yeah, like you said, they're raster images. So I'll kind of open it in Photoshop and then just kind of pick out the letters that I like the best, maybe mm -hmm. tweak them a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But usually I don't like to tweak it too much because then it can kind of lose that authentic. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's it's crazy how just the tiniest of tweaks can suddenly make it look not quite right. Um, yeah, so once I've lined up all the letters in Photoshop, I'll then um, send it over to Illustrator for vectorization. So just using the image trace tool and just playing around with the settings to kind of maintain as much of the detail that I want in the texture. So I'll try and, I should have said, I'd try and scan it as high quality as I can so you can kind of keep sure. those textures in there yeah and then um from illustrator is literally just the case of pasting each glyph into um font lab which is the software that i use okay um, so you still but, use in font lab you like that one pretty good. yeah yeah because so i do a lot of um open type features with my fonts as well especially with the handwritten fonts i'll add ligatures which are um double letter combinations um mm, yeah so it kind of maintains the authentic handwritten look when you've got like two letters that 
connect in the way that they would connect when they're handwritten. Yeah, it's for so example. crazy. It's so crazy mm. to me. Yeah. Yeah. So Font Lab allow is like really good for adding all the open type features. But I mean, if you want a really basic font builder, there's a great plugin called Font Self for Illustrator. Yeah. So, it's great. It's great. Yeah. yeah. So once I have all the letters vectorized in Illustrator, you could just drag them into the window, the font self window, and do the same thing in there. It's not yep. quite as um, extensive, like in terms not of as robust font. as as like Font Lab or Glyphs. Yeah, but the learning curve is is so much smaller for font uh, font self. So that is a great place to start. I definitely, I always recommend that as a starting point if you just want to kind of do it as a little side hobby. Yeah, I've also started self. playing with um, this new one called Calligrapher. But there's no right. ER. Um, yeah, I've I seen actually, that. I made one the other day, just like yeah. sent the document over for everybody that you can look it up. I'll I'll link it below. But basically, it gives you a sheet, and you just draw in the sheet, and yeah. then you give it back to calligrapher, and it just like vectorizes. Just spits it. out a font. It just spits out a font. Yeah, you get yeah. it's like very limited editability. But I just sent it over to Procreate, and I was like, I'm just gonna try it, and so I just drew. A A B B C C just in all caps and then I just drew it in lowercase. I just like I just want to see what it does. And I mean it was like 10 minutes and I had a TIFF file that I uploaded to Illustrator and it was very interesting. Yeah. Now it's not I would I would say maybe if you want to just dip your toe in the water, it's free to make like one font, I think. And that's that's like super limited. Uh, so okay. yeah, I think you can I think you can do one or two projects at a time and then you have to delete it to start another one so it's a subscription-based thing um yeah. whereas like i think font self is a one-time purchase i think glyphs is a one-time purchase i'm not yeah. sure about font lab maybe it's also a one-time purchase one time um, yeah yeah but it was i have to say it was neat and uh i don't know how very it was frustrating because i was like oh crap i can't really like unless you pay you can't really like kern stuff and but it was neat that's all i'm gonna say but i think you can then open that um TTF or OTF file or whatever it was that you had. I think you can open that in something like Font Self or oh, okay, and keep glyphs or whatever. And then yeah, so it's a good starting okay. point. And a lot of designers just want to create their own handwriting in a font so they can use it on their own, like their website their or stuff. whatever. Yeah. yeah. So it might it's not be great cool. for for client work, but if you just want a really quick handwritten font, then yeah, it's a good good starting point. In your process, you went from Photoshop to Illustrator basically just getting it vectorized to how it kind yeah. of in the character. And then now you've, now you've, you just copied and pasted it into font labs or, or do you, do you have to export anything to put it in the font lab? No, or? you can just copy and paste oh, straight nice. in. Okay. Yeah. That's even faster. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, if I was not making a handwritten font, I do actually design my glyphs in illustrator just cause I have, it's just what I've always used. And I get told off by other font designers, like you need to build it in the actual font software. I, I, um, I've heard this sometimes. Yeah. 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 And I just don't really want to relearn everything. And I'm a bit lazy. And I use a really nice plugin by Astute Graphics. I don't know if oh, you're aware. Oh, yeah. Of it. Astute yeah. is insane. Yeah. Yeah. They've got a plugin called Vector Scribe. Yep. Um, and there's just, yeah, so many little tools in there which make it a lot easier for me to um, design glyphs in Illustrator. So uh, my process now is actually quite fast in illustrator so to relearn it all nice. in font yeah to relearn it all in font lab but just takes so long and i just don't really I just well i mean at, like at the end of the day if you're if you're making sales i, I can't really i can't really right. argue no one can really That's argue with you you know yeah and and you just got to do whatever works for you and yeah. you know you said what's your process of making fonts and like i said there's so many different ways different mm. software different tools and if you come out at the end of it with a TTF file, which you can type with and looks really cool, then, you know, you it, want. Doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, I know yeah. a really successful font designer who does everything in font self. He doesn't have glyphs or font lab, and he didn't mention it for a while. And uh, I don't know if he expected like a backlash or something, but I was like, dude, that, that's awesome. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. it's made it so much more accessible for, for anyone to create a font. And uh, Yeah, I have a friend. That, amazing. Yeah, I have a friend that's literally just, I mean, he's making... Gosh, he pumps out like it feels like a font a week. His name is Taylor Penton. Um, and he just makes fonts, I'm pretty sure, with font self. Um, and they're they're fantastic. I mean, they're they they have character to them. Uh, a lot of them are just all one case. Um, yeah. but what he does really well, I think, is shows the use case. So his and maybe we can get into that kind of towards the end. Yeah. It's like he shows what you might use this for in his presentation. Um, but yeah. I've, I've jumped the gun a little bit. So you, so let's say you have all your letters in, um, you're using font lab. 
So are there a few things obviously that you're going to do before to kind of prep this for export? Yeah. So obviously the kerning is the first place to start. Um, all the letter spacing. I mean, there's not, there's not a whole lot to do. It's just a bit tedious. Just, um, yeah. so I'll, I'll paste out. I've got a, like a text file of every single letter combination, like A, B, A, C, A, D, A. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a big, it's a big file. Um, so, but you know, I'll just scan through it, make sure it, there's n nothing that looks horrible, make sure everything flows properly. And yeah. And then if I have ligatures and things like that, that'll come after um okay and the, yeah and the coding of all of those uh yeah and then it's it's just exporting as, as an otf file really nice okay yeah. and then and then so after after that i think this might be where people could potentially fall apart especially if they're just gonna do this as a like i just want to dip my toe in the water and i i kind of knew i can use my own as a use case i knew that this wasn't going to be the fanciest or the best or the most expensive font. That's why I'm not selling it for super expensive. But I knew that I had to make the presentation like sick. Like that's what it's about. And I think yeah. you you are like the exemplar for this, like how you present your fonts with the thumbnail. And Toby also does this really well on our heritage type site. I mean, just the absolute best flat lays and, 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 and examples and, and album covers and like all this stuff. So yeah. like, I mean, how, how important would you say that is? I, I say, I say that just because I see people still making sales and it's literally just black text on a white, a white background. It's just like, this yeah. is the font. Like if you want this font, you can have this font. I'm just wondering if like, there's so much more to be gained there. If you just kind of present it in, yeah. in the medium that it needs to be presented yeah massively important i would say as important as the actual font itself which seems crazy but it but it i is. mean it, it's true yeah especially if you're on the marketplaces and there's so many fonts to sift through you like you need to stand out and yeah your example of like a black font on a white background is okay if you're you know a really well established font designer and people go oh, to your sure, website sure. and they don't like, need to stand out against anybody else yeah like oh that's, no or something like that like right a, yeah. A yeah that's like just ball you know everyone is going to be absolute greatness yeah exactly um so there is there is like a, a space for that but yeah so where i sell on different marketplaces i just think you need to make it stand out as, as well as you can and that's where my experience yeah, of being a freelance designer for so long in the music mm. industry like really i think worked in my advantage like everything just kind of came together perfectly for me which i was really really lucky to um to have so yeah i mean i do spend a, lo a long long time putting together primarily the the cover the the primary image of the phone uh, yeah the big thumbnail yeah yeah so that has to be perfect and i'll go through many different like iterations line yeah. them all up and then you know without kind of looking at each one too specifically I'll, which one really st is just standing out is like shouting at me do you change them out ever so often and say like is is the, will this one work better or do you kind of just like let it ride when you you feel like just you let it ride one? okay yeah, yeah i think it's like a gut feeling like you know okay. something's really what working well um i th might have changed some of my very old ones mm. um but then when i used to spend maybe a bit less time on the imagery um okay. the promotional stuff and then yeah it's just like you really need to help your customers visualize exactly how it's going to work out you know in the wild on their projects and yeah if you can just inspire them with one image which might inspire them on a project that they're working on you know whether it's merchandise or a website or anything and they can just see that you've mocked it up on a t-shirt on a website and uh it could you know that can really spark the sales so yeah it's, it's yeah. usually hugely important yeah absolutely i i think that was kind of first and foremost all through the very beginning of the process um, I was like, I want this to, to be showcased. I mean, it's only going to be, it's going to be both case, but it's, it's not going to be super robust, but I, I'm going to make this presentation such that if you needed a typewriter font, you would want to use this one. You know, like I've got little yeah. cutouts of my typewriter that I removed the mm -hmm. background and it's sitting in the corner. Then I've got like a letterhead with like the super old typewriter in the body. To, you know what I mean? Like it's stuff like yeah. that. Like you just said, like if you're, if you've made this beautiful handwritten you know pseudo script font with lots of character to it 
you know, you show what that would look like on, you know, a beautiful apparel down the back or on the hat or on an album cover or something like that. Or maybe even it's something more robust that fits on like a, a, a perfume bottle or something like that. You know what I mean? Sure. Like even you kind of give that luxury feeling depending on the use mm. case, you know? Yeah. You, I mean, you have to wear a lot of hats as a font designer and like marketing, <laughs> yeah. marketing is, is, is one of them. And you have to really show your customers like why are they going to buy your font over someone else's mm. and with each font, I try and give it like a bit of it. So I'll kind of treat every font like a branding project and try and give yeah. a similar, evoke a similar sort of theme throughout each image. And I try and give each font like a USP. So something that really makes it stand out against other fonts. So if I'm making a handwritten font, you know, this, this font's got a hundred ligatures, which is the most ligatures I've ever done in a handwritten font. Then I'll make that really like front and center in the images and make a big deal out of that or, you know, this font is like a font duo. So it comes with yeah, um, yeah. Uh, like a sans font and it's got, a, you know, you don't have to find a script font to pair with it because I've designed I've literally a script yeah. font exactly to pair perfectly with it. So again, another like really good selling point. Um, so yeah, or maybe this font, like I said, with the, when I was using my camera to take a picture, that was like a gold um, paint texture. So it was like my first gold painted font. And I think first example of a gold, svg font that i had seen so yeah, yeah they all have their own little thing that makes it stand out you know yeah it's not just an, it's not just another handwritten font in a sea of ten thousand handwritten fonts <laughs> yeah that's for sure i mean yeah presentation yeah. alone i think will shine through i think spe specifically yeah just playing with use case presentation how are you displaying it? Are you showing the characters at some point? You know, you see, can you see all the characters? Are there something, you know, cause I was, I'm reminded of a conversation I was having with another um, collaborator where we were talking about just kind of digital assets, digital packs. Um, and he was saying that it's very rare in a pack of digital resources. Let's say I am selling, you know, 60 icons, right? 60 little Y2K or futuristic icons in a pack. Um, it's just rare that someone is going to use all 60. So yeah. you need to find the best and the most like premium icons or shapes that you've made and like really capitalize on those, display those. And I think so, to a degree, some can be said ab about the font. Like if the ligatures shine through, that's going to be in those thumbnails. If it's multiple mm. weights, if it's five weights, then there's like boom, you see all the weights from thin to show them or whatever. Yeah, show yeah. them. Try yeah. and show it in the in in the front in the main image if you can. Some of mine are very busy because I'm trying to show, show so time. much. <laughs> can you see the texture? Can you see all the fonts? Can you see how to use it? Yeah, if you you can just get one image that kind of conveys everything that you're trying to say with that font, that then you're onto a winner. Because I, I mean, some of the fonts I see that are just incredible and have so many features and then they've got like three promotional images and and they're just like you said just plain colored just, just typing sitting out the there yeah <laughs> yeah and it's just like oh it's yeah it's such a shame because the actual font itself is is incredible and yeah uh, i think that yeah, yeah i think i, I want to like almost think about it the way I, I i try to relate everything back to youtube like i think about it the way i think about a youtube video like I have a general idea of what the thumbnail is going to be. I have a general idea of what the title might be. I have a general idea of what the selling point or the driver in the video is going to be. And it's like, if you haven't thought those things through before you start kind of making the font, yeah. um, that's kind of what you've just described where these creators or these agencies thought out the type setting so good. And then they were like, Oh, well that's what we're good at was, was making the, we we made the font, you know what I mean? Like that's the end of it. Like we're that's our skill set is like we didn't really think about uh what it's supposed to look like. So yeah, I don't know. I think just kind of reversing it a little bit, um, mm. doing a little bit of research and saying, like, okay, Definitely. in the in the marketplace, I see this 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 looks pretty good, this looks pretty cool. I have a pretty good idea of what I want this main image to look like. I already was gonna make this font already, so now I have a good idea of the presentation. So you kind of reverse engineer it a little bit and yeah. set yourself up for success. Sure. Yeah. It's like I was saying, treating it like a branding project, you mm, know? Yeah. So 
before I start any fun, I will, I'll make myself a brief, like a client brief that you would put oh, together. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look very good because I'm not showing it to anyone. <laughs> so it's usually just a paper with just loads of scribbled down crazy ideas, which to yeah. anyone else wouldn't probably make any sense. But um, yeah, definitely get a, a really strong concept in your head because I've skipped that part before and then kind of been wishy-washy with mm. what exactly I was trying to target. You know, that's another thing with my fonts is that I'll always kind of focus on a really specific niche. Like this is going to be a really aggressive, loud font, which is going to be perfect for yeah. like heavy metal bands or whatever. Or sure. well, this is going to be a really sophisticated, elegant, luxury elegant. font for luxury brands. And um, really just focus in on that or make all the imagery like as luxury as possible, make all the lettering as luxury as possible with the swashes and, and just really hone in on, on that niche. And yeah. um, having having like a really clear brief at the start of a, a font project can really, really help with that and visualize your, like the exact customer that you want to sell it to and just go kind of full, <laughs> full steam ahead on there. Maybe the last little section we can talk about is kind of what what styles are 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 prevalent right now like i i know the word trendy kind of has a bad rap generally because trends kind of come and go but i think something can be trending or a style can be trending and i also just kind of want to hear from your experience now having over a hundred fonts <laughs> um do you find that you know there's there's one style that's just like kind of reigns supreme that's the gap that you filled or and we don't have to necessarily talk about this in the way that's like, hey, you should go make these fonts. I'm kind of thinking about it like the viewers that are watching that want to use uh, fonts be in these styles because the style is trending. I'm kind of thinking about I, I yeah. did a really I did a really big video a couple weeks ago where I went through 15 trends for this mm. year that I think are going to be good. And I, I did my best to back it up with data. I wasn't just like saying like, I think it's going to be boho because I like it. You know what I mean? which is that kind of mystical, long, kind of wavy, almost psychedelic style. That's an example. You know, those, yeah. I think that there is a high search volume on Creative Market and Etsy and wherever else. If you type that yeah. in, you're going to mm -hmm. see these kind of boho mystical fonts. So maybe if you just kind of give a little slight brain dump over 2023 of what yeah. you saw with font sales, styles that are trending, because people want to know, like, I don't know, what, what font should I use for my projects <laughs> yeah yeah it's such a difficult one like that is the big question isn't it what's what's going to trend especially as a font designer we, <laughs> right. we're all trying to put like see the future mm. and it's something that i do with every font uh try and look at trends and try and predict and nine times out of ten i'll get it completely wrong but if i can just get that one font released at the right time when a trend is just on the up then you can you can really have a successful font um so yeah, it's it's like asking to see the future. It's very very difficult, and yeah. I wouldn't get bogged down too heavily in trends. Like don't I mean don't do something that's just completely out there that you've just never seen anywhere before. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm struggling to answer the question. But um, the, yeah, but I'm I'm also thinking about it kind of like on a project basis. Obviously, yeah, like it, it, it's it's rare to it's maybe rare to search fonts like you would a trend because they're already closely attached. So the, the description yeah. is gave a boho or another one I think that's coming up is this pseudo gothic. Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm seeing a resurgence of black letter. Black fonts. letter mixed with. But it's um, like a Y2K kind of edge to it. But, but also mixed with this like utilitarian style. So okay. like really clean, almost website looking layout, but with like bold black letter in the middle right so it creates this yeah. kind of gothic slash really clean minimal aesthetic right so in that resurgence of that style you're going to see more black letter i think that's right i, I also kind of searched that yeah. I, I just searched that in google trends i was like black letter okay it's, it's, yeah people are searching for it, you know what i mean so and and like, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't it, you'd be surprised yeah, I mean, so there's uh, the, so recently there's been a big resurgence in serif fonts and kind of nostalgic 90s, mm, 80s style 100%. serifs. Um, yeah, and they're I find them quite difficult to design because really, a, yeah. So like I said, I, m I much prefer doing this the handwritten handwritten stuff, yeah pen on paper. Yeah, serifs, everything's so precise, and you know I do have a few of them, and um, I'm really pleased with how they turned out. Uh, 
but they just take me much, much longer to make. And, you know, I think that's when I really do need to start designing with font in the in the font software because uh, I'll really mm. see the benefits of it. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, so what I would say is that there's so many people looking for, it's, you know, if you were just focus on serif fonts, you know, that's fine. You're going to have a niche of serif fonts, but not everybody out there is is looking for a serif font. Yeah. I mean, you can get so bogged down by trends and you look on Instagram and oh, everybody's posting this style of work, but it doesn't mean that every design agency out there is going to, is going to use or, that style. Yeah. Or every brand is looking for that because I mean, I yeah. think about some it's just of, the same as everyone else and yeah. you, you won't stand out and everybody's looking for different things all the time. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I mean, you, you've worked with some really amazing, I think both artists and brands, right. That are at yeah. least using your, Fonts is what I mean for for a various amount of things. Yeah, and I think like every designer has their own specific style, and if you're going to design your own font, you know, just try and play to your strengths. You know, do you have a style that that you're really good at, or uh, that you're known for that you can bring to the typography world? And I'm sure there'll be a market for it. Like you said, with your typewriter font, like that's awesome, and maybe, that, maybe that's not something that's trending massively at the moment, but. There's a yeah. lot of people out there that are going to look for typewriting fonts. And like you said, you've sold quite a few already. So I wouldn't get too bogged down with the trends. What I tend to do is uh, try and predict a trend with a font and uh, and then with my next font, just have fun with it and try and find mm. a nice balance between That's cool. trying to predict a trend and then, yeah, doing something else. Because you can just get so bogged down by it. And if you're following trends all the time, you, you kind of might end up just catching up with trends all the time and jumping on the bandwagon that's kind of already ending and it's, it's really really difficult to to uh you know release because fonts take so long to design right <laughs> yeah so <laughs> that's another problem is that you can see something trending and then yeah you know i'm lucky because i do it full time but if you're doing sure. it as on a side, side hustle it can yeah. take as long as it can take years and yeah. yeah so just just do something that you're already passionate about and then you'll have much more fun making it and um you might come out with like a unique style then but i'm not saying don't follow trends but just don't focus on it too much because yeah it doesn't always work out the way you yeah. want it to well i think the next question that are is is in a lot of people's heads um or i'm assuming i'll probably get comments in the in the the YouTube comments is, do you, uh, do you teach this anywhere or are there plans for kind of showing your process? Because I mean, I have a lot of friends that just through the connections I've made, I know they teach fonts, make font making, they teach how to use the softwares. Obviously there's lots of YouTube videos, but I think your process that you laid out for us in the beginning is very, uh, diverse. I think it's unique. And I'm wondering if there's, uh, uh, a desire, a want, a need for that. So do you have plans to eventually teach this anywhere or, or are you already on YouTube or do you have like a master class planned for the future? I don't have anything planned at the moment. No, not, not for teaching. <laughs> oh, you just let down everybody. Watching. I know. Sorry. Yeah. You've made such a, you built it up so much. I'm I know I built it up now. You have to do it. No, I'm yeah. just <laughs> no, I have, I, I have considered it and, um, you know, yeah, I might, that is some, that is an option for me. You know, if, uh, if I do get tired of making them, then yeah, selling courses is something I would definitely consider. And there's some really good courses out there. And, uh, I think I could definitely bring something new to the table, but mm. it's, um, I would just want to do it properly. You know, I yeah. want it to be to a rush thing that I quickly, I really want to give, give it the attention it deserves, you know, and it's like I said, it's such a big project every font takes so long and and yeah. it's, it's a little bit daunting to me i'm not naturally a teacher i just love to create so at the moment i've got sure. so many font ideas all the time at the moment i'm working on like three simultaneously oh wow so, yeah which wow. Uh, is uh it's a bit crazy so it it, yeah like if you need somebody with a camera there full time to just well just yeah, follow maybe. you around and be like <laughs> this this font a font b font, you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, I did. I, I Twitch streamed my font design once, but I don't think that was oh, the right nice. medium. Yeah, because about three people joined, and uh, I think YouTube would probably be if you went YouTube live. Yeah. I think you, you'd have a little bit more of a of an of an interest there. Uh, the yeah. I think I think YouTube is more of the learning. Twitch is just kind of more of that entertaining. Uh, yeah. And then, well, YouTube can kind of be both, actually. But I, I mean, I do share. Um, I do try and offer tips and help 
with more with like actually using fonts and mm. uh, so to help that customers who actually buy the font. So I do have a YouTube with some tutorials on there, but it's not so much making fonts. It's um, yeah, installing them and using them and okay. inspiration and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's one day. question. Where, um, where where can people follow you? Um, where do you want to people? Uh, where do you want to direct people to? Of course, I'll link everything down uh, in the description for people to check out. But yeah, where where's like first and foremost? Do you want to direct people um, to find out yeah. more about you? Well, the website is definitely the best place to start, which which is setsellstudios.com. Um, in terms of social media, I'm most active on Instagram, which is mm. at Set Sale Studios. Um, same on Twitter and YouTube as well. Perfect. Okay. Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you're still watching, of course, we really appreciate it. Um, this was such a good hangout just to talk with Sam and, and get his insight into font making and, and, and type making and what goes into that. Of course, check out all those links down in the description. Check out the website. Um, Look at some fonts and, and purchase some fonts that you like. By the way, you can upload them to Kittle. There's free ones on there as well. There's free ones on there. I've got yeah. I've got Sam's fonts and I've uploaded them to Kittle. I use them all the time. If you didn't know that, you can upload your fonts to Kittle to use for your project. Um, and yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Go subscribe to Sam's YouTube and we will see you in the next video. Bye.